Welcome back to Plague Studios, everyone. Ryan here on today's installment of Heavy Reflection. I'm going to be touching on a topic I've been wanting to talk about for, well, probably since I made this channel, honestly. And just like a lot of the topics on this series, it goes against kind of everything that uh, I stand for in this whole Plague Size Studio project about being objective, about taking my personal views out of it. Um, but the reason I make this video, the reason I made every other video I have in this little series up to this point is to give you kind of an insight as to why I run the channel the way I do, why there's videos you may see that you wouldn't expect, or there are videos you're not going to see that you uh, may expect. And that's going to be kind of pertinent. And, uh, and I think in the near future, because today we are talking about guitar gear reviews. I'm going to be using air quotes a lot in this video, I have a feeling. So you may be surprised to hear that a majority of the content I watch, I'm talking like 95% plus of the things I watch comes from YouTube. I know a lot of content creators hate YouTube content because they're making it. I mean, it's like that whole thing where a mechanic's car is usually a bigger piece of crap than anyone else drives because that's their job and the last thing they want to do is work on a car. So I get that. But, you know, YouTube has been around since I've been in my adolescent years. And I think a lot of the stuff that's on now, once you get past all the clickbaity, you know, FaceTime at 3 a.m. challenge bullshit, really puts mainstream networks to shame in terms of quality, in terms of information and whatever you want's out there. And a healthy percentage of that YouTube content I watch every day, probably well over half at this point, is actually review media, whether it be PC tech or even guitar gear or firearms or media, you know, stuff like movies, video games. And I think it's given me kind of a different perspective than someone who doesn't watch it and just does their own reviews of some sort, whether it be in, you know, one of those industries or, or anything else. And um, because of that, I try to emulate the things that I do like from all the different media that I watch. And I try to stay away from the things I don't take away the stuff that doesn't fit in this particular category. And I think the biggest center in terms of one particular category has to be in terms of the stuff that I watch. I can't speak for like makeup tutorials and everything else, but guitar gear reviews are an absolute shit show. This isn't to say there aren't great guitar content creators out there that do a lot of the things that I will be talking about. Um, it's not to say that I haven't committed many of these sins before in my own videos which is what makes it all that much more frustrating to me because it, it is just so baked into this little ecosystem we have going on. But I also think I'm far, far from the only person that sees this sort of thing happening over and over. And it's especially been really exhausting the past few months with this wave of amp plugins coming out, um, which I've only tested out a couple of them, but I was already in the midst of, of trying out some older ones that I'd got sent to review. And um, yeah, just seeing the same thing pop up over and over and seeing this happen for years with any other, whatever, you know, the flavor of the month is, it's really, it's just aggravating and I can't keep, I can't keep silent about it anymore. If I had to sum up my criticism for Guitar Gear reviews in, I guess, a couple sentences, it'd really be that most of them just aren't reviews. Simple as that. I have no problem with the three to five minute demo, you know, playthrough, whatever you want to call it, um, of someone saying, hey, I got sent this product for free, or even I spent this product, and here is a few minutes of me playing, here's a vertical slice of what this can do, here are some of my favorite tones. That's value added to me. That's someone saying, hey, I, I wonder what this can do, I wonder if this will work for me. This guy seems to like sort of same tones I do. I'm going to click on this and see what it, um, see what it sounds like you're not going to get the in-depth dive of, okay, here's the features, here's how it stacks up to competing products, all that, but that's fine. Uh, there's, you know, that happens in practically every other category of product reviews as well. Um, and I think, again, that's value added. The problem I have is when you start tipping over into that 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, and it's still basically a glorified demo, and you're calling it a review and not saying anything. That's one of my biggest gripes reviewers just say something. I'm more than capable of reading the back of the box. I can read a web page. You know, I don't need a 25 minute breakdown of every feature on this product that the manufacturer is probably expecting you to do. And to some extent, I do that in a lot of my videos. However, it's for ones that I feel are either um, extremely innovative that need called out as a positive point 
or they detract from the quality of the product or it seems like something so new or crazy that I think it may scare potential customers off and I wanna go over and say, hey, look, no, this is really cool, don't be afraid of it, it works really easily, that sort of thing. And then we move over. You know, If, if this has a tone knob, I'm not gonna spend 20 minutes explaining the fine details about a tone knob, you've probably seen them before. And that's one of my biggest problems is a lot of it is just filler. They don't say really anything. Every other review media that I watch, whether it be tech related or media, whatever it is, they have some sort of insight in the industry. They have some sort of experience that they can relate back to whatever product they're looking at. And you know, maybe not all of it is agreeable. That's kind of the point of review media in general. You shouldn't just be watching one of them. Um, but they have something to say that is value added. Again, you don't have to agree with it, but maybe someone says, you know, I think this movie is really cool. I think they were doing a lot of good things with it, but the cinematography really hurt it in a lot of these places because it was shot like a daytime television show and it looks really bland or the special effects didn't work here and it really killed the climax of the movie. And again, you don't necessarily have to agree with those things point for point, but there's analysis going on. There's an argument being built. There is comparing and contrast. There's evaluation of why this product or why this game or movie should exist when there's thousands of others like it in the world, whether or not it's worth your time, how it stacks up to the competition. How many times can you name off the top of your head in the last six months of Guitar Gear reviews you've watched that say something like that? I can't really think of any to tell you the truth. We've had, again, so many of these AMP plugins come out and besides from maybe an occasional shootout like I've done before, and even on those shootouts, I try to kind of work review material in those, I rarely see meaningful context in gear reviews. And I think that's one of the biggest lacking factors across most review videos is context. Again, going back to the other media reviews, it's chock full of context. Well, maybe this video would have done well, or this movie would have done well, or this game would have done well, but there was something that was just like it came out two weeks ago, or this one was hyped up so much more that it drowned out the other one and it's well worth your money in this case, not this case. I never hear anything like that in, in gear reviews. It's always one day, oh, this is a great sounding plugin. Sweet. I think it's good. Go buy it. A week later, something comes out that is a direct competitor. Oh, I think this is sweet. Go buy it. It would help if you said, well, I think this one works for maybe this genre more. I think this one is a complete waste of time. If you're into this kind of stuff, I think they're both worth having. I think this one obsoletes the other. You never hear that. It's just a constant stream of this sounds good. Go buy it. Flavor of the month. And then we're going to forget about this in a year. And it's never going to show up on this YouTube channel ever again. And it's going to be lost to obscurity because I'm just churning through reviews. One of the counter arguments I see a lot to points similar to this is, well, tone is subjective, bro. You can't be objective in this sort of media when you have all these different amps and effects and it's going to sound good to some people and not to others. You can't take a pedal and say it's a good product or not or you should buy this over the other one because it is entirely up to the person buying it. And I agree with that, 100%. I cannot tell you that this pedal is better than a Tube Screamer. I can't. What I can tell you is that it responds this way in a certain application versus a Tube Screamer, and I think most people will prefer that. I can tell you that a Tube Screamer has this much range of output versus this one. I can tell you that I like the way you access the battery better on this, or whatever. And that's substance. That's something that's meaningful. You barely ever hear that. And I'm not saying you have to shit all over products all the time. If there's a good product, say what's good about it. If there's minor nitpicks, also nitpick those things if it is necessary. If this was a $25 pedal and it has you know one minor problem, I'm probably going to overlook it because it's good for the value. If it's a $250 pedal and they overlook something stupid like that, then I'm going to call it out because that's important to me at that price range. And that's context. You rarely see that in guitar gear reviews. I think there's plenty of factors that are contributing to that whole contextualist atmosphere of gear reviews. Um, the audience I think is important because obviously as content creators, we are trying to make content for a particular audience, somewhat catering, somewhat shilling in my opinion. But, you know, the few times you try to be objective, or at least I've experienced this in the past, where I say, oh, well, this 
isn't good or I find this feature offensive at this price, um, then you get, you know, fanboys coming out of the woodwork and they're totally offended. You would say anything negative about their precious little toy. And that happens everywhere else. It's just like, grow up, man. That's not to say most of the audience participates in that behavior. It's probably less than 1%, but you know, squeaky wheel gets the grease and all that. And it definitely seems more pervasive than in something like video games or the tech world from my experience, because you are criticizing products that maybe people have an attachment to because, you know, music is sort of spiritual in that, in that regard. And because of that, I think you see some of that hostility kind of dissuade content creators from saying anything too real. Um, I think rather than, you know, shit all over a product, they just say, no, I don't think that's going to be good. And I'll just, you know, 10 foot pole, stay away. And I won't have to deal with the flame wars. I think an even bigger contributor though, is the manufacturers, because let's, let's be honest. If you're a company, you don't want reviews. No one wants reviews for a product they're making. It's kind of a dirty little secret. They want hype pieces, the same thing anyone else does. Go to a movie theater and sit through the 15 to 25 minute block of advertisements. You're not watching a review. They don't want a review. They don't want to show a work in process screening to a bunch of movie critics and have that play because then you're going to get honesty and that ain't going to sell. That's going to be detrimental if anything. They want hype pieces. They want to show the best special effects. They want to show the critical moments in the movie and get you to go spend your money. And that's what a lot of gear reviews are. Again, I have no problem with five minute demos. Um, people that are not saying anything, that's fine. Just show the product and be done. My, my gripe with this entire video is glorified demos, glorified hype pieces that have review in the title and they don't review it. They just say, here's a new box and listen how good it sounds. And we're going to forget about the box we talked about two weeks ago that does the exact same thing and is probably objectively superior in some ways. And uh, yeah, just, just buy this one because I have an affiliate code in the comment. Go, 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 go. And I get there's plenty of content creators that do this for a living and that's a really cool spot to be in. So I understand to pay the bills. You kind of have to do some of that stuff sometimes. Just don't call it a review. Um, if, and if you like the product, great. I'm not saying you gotta chew something to death that doesn't need chewing to death, but if you know you gotta pay the bills, just don't call it a review. That's really what it boils down to. Um, there's plenty of times I've been sent stuff that where I've been in that kind of exact same scenario where it's like, hey, we'll give you a product if you'll look it over. And there's been times where I've said, look, I just don't think I have enough to say about this. It's okay, it's fine but I don't, you know, it's not something I think it's worth time making a video. And I've been sent stuff that I've been interested in and the same thing turned out or I just didn't like it and I didn't think it was worth doing and that's fine. And I'm kind of in a privileged position that I can do that because I do this for fun. So, you know, I get it when the whole, the money and sponsorship all come into play, but just you're no longer impartial at that point. You cannot review something like that when you have that much money riding on it. Um, some of this stuff is just a free code, which, you know, I review a lot of stuff that way, but they don't expect anything. There's no contract. It's, Hey, I see you do videos. Here's a free thing. Tell us what you think. And you know, if I shit all over it, probably ain't going to get a review code in the future. That's okay. That's, that's my job as far as I'm concerned. However, Every time I've been sent a free product code, I've made criticisms. I've said something. I've said, I think this can be improved or I don't like this in a product that you have to pay $100 for. Pretty much every time, matter of fact, every person I've worked with in terms of review codes, I've had a follow-up afterwards. So I think that's what they want. And with all these factors playing into the gear review industry, I feel like people don't even know what a review is a lot of the times. <laughs> You know, everything's been dressed up from a hype piece to look like a review to the point that some people think that if you talk for over 50% of the video, it's no longer a review, which is weird to me. Um, I'm wearing a Gamers Nexus shirt right now. This is one of my favorite publications, one of my favorite outlets for anything. Um, I absolutely look up to Steve Burke and his team as inspirations for 
both what I do in terms of the technical setup um, and in terms of how I present my videos. I love what they do. They are no nonsense. They don't take bullshit. They call out manufacturers when they do something iffy. Um, they go through investigations that no other tech outlet would touch because they're real journalists as far as I'm concerned. That's what real journalism looks like. And um, that's what their reviews are. If they take a new graphics card launch, it's entirely talking. That's all it is. You're looking at you know, performance data, stuff that you can objectively measure, thermal data, um, stuff that we can't necessarily do in um, guitar gear. And if we did some stuff like EQ analysis, you'd probably have a whole other horde of people calling it out as reverse engineering or whatever drama you want to put on that. But that's what reviews are. And I, I think it was like on an ocean machine demo or something I did where uh, a couple people were just like, you, you didn't play for more than half the video. This is garbage. That, that's fine. Number one, watch someone else. Number two, that's what demos and playthroughs are for. This is a review. <laughs> All of these things I mentioned are obstacles I feel that ultimately we can surpass if we work together a bit, if audience members would go out and maybe change their expectations about what a review actually is compared to other categories out there on YouTube. If the content creators might frame some of their content with a little bit more transparency at times, but I feel the main thing driving this problem, the main root cause is something we will never solve because it is inherent to this category. And it's so different from other review media I watch. I'm sure this might happen in other places. And if it does, please let me know below. But um, speaking as a biased individual who only watches you know, certain types of reviews, this is the only place I see this. And it boils down to this. In any other media, you watch that person, that company, that whatever outlet for their ideas is what it boils down to. Obviously, even between both gear reviews and any other review, there might be uh, production value you like, there might be long or short format that you like, there might be um, editing or whatever you want to put uh, a name to it that draws you to that particular content. But ultimately, you are watching a reviewer for their ideas. I watch Jim Sterling, not because I necessarily agree entirely with all of his opinions on all video games, but I find his opinion informative, I find it valuable, and um, I like him as a person for his humor and, and comedy and all that. I watch Gamers Nexus for the reasons I've talked about earlier, about objectivity, about their incredible testing methods, um, all that good stuff. It's ultimately their ideas is what it boils down to. People, on the other hand, from my experience, tend to watch Guitar Gear YouTubers because of the way they play guitar, or the kind of music they play, or the production value of their music, or the type of tones they dial in. That doesn't make you a good reviewer. Me being able to get a good sound out of this Super Overdrive in front of a Marshall JCM 800 doesn't give me the ability to intelligently say what I like about the sound. It doesn't give me the ability to thoughtfully deconstruct what makes this pedal special in the sea of overdrive pedals. It doesn't give me the ability to tell you why I think you should buy this over something else. And that's what gets lost in reviews. And it's what I'm so tired of. I'm so tired of the endless meat grinder of new product here, new product here, go out, buy it, it's great. Well, that review's done, out the fucking window that one goes and let's get on to the next product. And we'll never solve this problem because in my view, people watch gear reviewers for a different reason than they watch other reviewers. Again, it doesn't necessarily make you a bad reviewer just because someone watches you because you make good guitar tones but I think it is kind of at odds of being an objective reviewer. If you make everything sound the same, if you try to use a blues product or a product intended for blues and soft rock players for something for metal, and you know, I'm not saying that happens, but uh, that sort of thought process, um, you need to have some sort of idea about the grander context of the product. You need to have something to say, and that's what I end up yelling at my screen a lot of the times if there's a new you know cool product that comes out um 
something that interests me. And then of course, review embargo day drops and you get 1800 notifications in your subscriptions and you watch all of them. And I just I keep saying to my screen over and over, just say something, say anything. <laughs> just tell me something I haven't heard 15 times. Give me a reason I should watch your content aside from the fact that you've played these riffs because that's often what it boils down to. And that is my frustration. And that is the reason that going forward from here on out, I've pretty much decided if it's not a product that I've spent my own hard earned cash on, if it's not something that is different, something that I can say something valuable and different and, you know, make content worth watching, I'm not reviewing it. Um, there's been some products that I've looked at just because I've been excited about it because I bought it because I thought, yeah, I want to show this off to the world. And I'm at the point where if it's just going to sit in a sea of other reviews that do the same thing, I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I, I, I'm not doing it anymore. I want something that's going to be unique. I want something that I can have my own angle on. I can have my own twist in content, whether it be more objective analysis, whether it be um, compare contrast. I don't know what that looks like quite yet. I have ideas, but um, if it's just going to be another, here's a new pedal, slap it on. There it is. Woo. Yeah. I'm not doing it anymore. It just, I'm sick of it. I don't want to be part of the system. And, um, that's ultimately why I made this video tell you why, um, you may not be seeing many more reviews in the way you have in the past from me. Cause, um, I, I don't get joy from that. And, that's why in the last couple you've seen, I do try to make an emphasis on those things. Obviously you get some tone demos, but I want to make it explicitly clear why I think this particular product has value, whether it's worth your money, who it's worth that money for. And, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, I know that's going to lose me some support from both manufacturers and um, audience members and other content creators. And I don't give a shit because that's not how the rest of the review world works. And, um, I don't want to be a part of it. So yeah, that's been a long time coming. Um, any other more complex thoughts on the situation, please leave them below and we will see you later down the road, hopefully with more valuable stuff compared to this. Thanks for watching. Bye.